So I'm very happy to speak to Dr. Jeff Dunn today, who is the Director for Experimental Imaging Centre at the University of Calgary. Thank you for talking to me, Dr. Dunn. No problem, Julie. Look forward to it. <laughs> okay. So first of all, tell us about your involvement with ISMRM. What do you do within the society? So I've been with ISMRM since it was two names ago. So I have one of those tags that says, been around forever at the meeting, <laughs> <laughs> which means you can come up to me and ask me about stuff, which is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, this last year, I was part of the program committee. So we put the whole program together in about two and a half, well, about two days, thousands of abstracts into every hour. And I'm also part of the cancer, um, cancer teaching committee. And are you looking forward to anything in particular at the up and coming meeting? I always look forward to meeting people. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first started, I spent most of my time in the sessions. And now I, I confess, I spend most of my time in the posters and in the coffee shops and, you know, talking. Uh, that's really the benefit is to getting together in person. Mm -hmm. And is that how you took an interest in social media? Uh, that started because, you know, it might be a little bit of a surprise, but I was debating acting versus science. Oh, really? When I was an undergraduate. <laughs> yeah, I did musicals and sang and did all that stuff. So I've always enjoyed communicating. Mm -hmm. And as, I, as, as this idea of social communicating became more accessible to, you know, regular people like myself, mm -hmm. I thought it was a pretty logical thing to get started in. So I've, I've taken courses now in social media and took a two-week science communication course in social media, had you know radio, video, that kind of stuff. So getting quite interested in it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what exactly do you get out of using social media? Well, I, I see it as a, as a really logical extension to how scientists communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, historically, and really the last 20, 30 years, we've withdrawn a bit through publication and think our job is done. You know, I'm, I'm saying what's kind of a party line in mm -hmm. social science communication. We need to get out there more and get people interested. That's what our species does is it, it goes and learns new things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to tell people what we're learning. And is that how you would encourage others to start using social media? Yeah, I'd encourage it because it's fun. And, and you get your message out. People get to know you. Um, I don't think I would enter it with the idea of changing the climate of people's attitude towards science. That's too big a job. But if we all get out and do that, that mm -hmm. will happen. It'll just happen. But you have to kind of choose your, your milestones and your goals to something that, that you would enjoy doing. And in the process of doing that, you know, you'll get the message out and people will enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope so. So, are you presenting any of your work from the Experimental Imaging Centre at this year's meeting? Yeah, yeah, my minions will be there <laughs> presenting. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have one project on cancer, which is uh, we're, we're doing cell tracking in animal models and cancer in tumour models. So, mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at imaging to uh, detect stimulation of the innate immune system as a way of treating the tumor. Okay. And we found a, a, relatively, uh, a relatively inexpensive drug that's, that's, that actually is showing really good tumor control. And this project that we're going to present is, is to show how, using MRI, we can show the drug's actually working. That's one. The other one is on MS. You know, I, I'm quite interested in metabolism, as you know. Um, done you know my, my degree was on hypoxia adaptation mm -hmm. so that's been a thread through my career in the last few years in MS there's been a, a movement away from thinking that if you cure inflammation and demyelination you'll cure the disease there's a lot of demyelination that they have presented you know there's a lot of good drugs out there but there's still gray matter damage and mm. gray matter atrophy and so maybe there's a, a gray matter or a cellular energy component that we can start investigating in the last couple of years we've been combining optical imaging with MRI oh. doing near infrared with MRI yeah to look at mitochondrial function mm. and tissue oxygenation so the presentation is showing that uh, that we can study metabolism and gray matter in these mouse models of MS and that there indeed are changes that's something to look forward to in Singapore then. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and meeting you and having good food and, you know, doing the hallway chatting. Likewise. Well, Dr. Dunn, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me this afternoon. Okay, take care, Julie. Thanks.